By the 1950s and 60s, Exxon and other oil companies were fully engaged in the climate debate and on notice of potentially grave climate risks from the burning of fossil fuels. So the question becomes, what did they do with what they knew? The truth is, they did a great deal. When scientists showed that oceans would not absorb the excess carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuels, oil companies funded research into other sinks, trees, plants, soils, even algae, that might offset emissions, reduce the problem, or perhaps shift the blame. They funded research into aerosol pollutants that might cool the earth and mask CO2-fueled warming. And they promoted theories about the sun's role in climate change, theories that remain a staple of climate skeptics to this day. But beyond simply studying the climate, they sought to control it. Industry-promoted studies argued that petroleum products could help control the weather itself. Burning oil on the ground to clear away fog or blow away smog, coating land and asphalt to change rainfall patterns, or using oil slicks on the sea surface or carbon dust sprayed from aircraft to shift or weaken hurricanes. They also knew how to control their own emissions. Oil companies filed patents for fuel cells years before they went before Congress to oppose government funding for research into electric cars. They patented technologies to remove CO2 from gas streams, technologies the industry recognized could cut CO2 emissions in half, but decided it wasn't worth the investment. Instead, the industry invested in the promise of a melting and increasingly exploitable Arctic, patenting offshore drilling rigs designed to operate in ice-bound Arctic waters, ice-breaking tankers that could crush through the fabled Northwest Passage to bring Arctic oil to market, and new, taller oil rigs that could withstand rising sea levels caused by climate change. In September 1969, two Inuit hunters drove their dog sleds into the Arctic sea ice and into the path of a thousand-foot Exxon tanker, halting, if only for a moment, the company's relentless quest for Arctic oil. It was a harbinger of conflicts to come. What might we have done differently if these companies, instead of obscuring climate realities, had warned consumers and investors about climate risks? Would we have invested more in renewables? Changed how we built entire cities? What would climate action decades sooner have meant for island nations facing an existential threat from rising sea levels? How do we weigh the industry's savings on costly emission technologies against the untold costs of climate change to economies, ecosystems, and to humanity? This is not just a story about what the oil industry knew about climate change. This is a story about how it reacted once it found out. Explore the documents here and see for yourself how the most powerful industry on the planet responded and failed to respond to the existential threat of climate change.